This is the plate of Richard Paul Sparks II. He says he was driving down a two-lane road, minding his own business, when the defendant evidently lost control of her car, crossing the double yellow line and striking him. She then continued moving and crashed into a parked car. The woman lied to him about having a valid license. She lied to him about having insurance. And he was here to teach her a lesson, suing for the $3,000 he needs to get his car fixed. This is the defendant, Tamara Lynn Gall. He says a car struck her in the rear and the impact caused her to swerve into the plaintiff's car. That's why they hit one another. The other car fled the scene. The plaintiff was drinking a bottle of Hennessy while he was driving, and he was slurring his words. The guy didn't produce a valid license to her. His passenger said he had two DUIs on his record, and he was negligent, so she owes nothing. She's accused of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. All parties, please use your right hand. You see to come to one of these. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Doug. You're welcome, ma'am. Mr. Sparks. Yes, ma'am. So one fine day, you're driving down what street? Hague Avenue. And you have somebody in the car with you? Yes, ma'am. What happens? Uh, we're driving down Hague Avenue. I'm heading south. Come on over here and show me. Take uh, okay. a couple of those cars um, and make yourself one and her the other. Okay. I'll be the blue car. Okay. Uh, I'm heading southbound on Hague Avenue. She's heading northbound. She's following somebody coming this way. She's coming this way. For whatever reason, this car slams its brakes. She swerves out like this. I come in. I try to cut onto the double line as best I can without Where's hitting Where's the other car? At that point, the other car cleared? Just, just yep. kept on going. Yeah. And then I collide with her right there. She goes off into this, over the sidewalk and into the yard here. Wow. Okay. So then traffic had cleared. There was no parking here. So then I went across the street to the parking on this side of the road and stopped. And I have photographs that will verify all of that. Okay. So go ahead and go back. Did you call the police? Yes. I called the police. Uh, they said they would send someone right out. And then they called me back and said that they were on priority calls only. I guess there was a stabbing or something two blocks away from there. Okay. All right. Um, did she? Did you ask her for her insurance information? I did. I asked her for her insurance and her driver's license. She, she produced a uh, temporary ID for a driver's license and no insurance. Wait, you mean a, a permit? Yeah, it was like a permit. Do you have a license? Oh, I have a permit, but I had a licensed driver sitting next to Who me. Who was the licensed driver you had sitting next to My friend. But your friend's not here? She wasn't able to make it. She's How old are you? 22. Go on. Okay, so um, I went down. To, the police department told me to come down and file an accident report, in which case I did. Okay, I can I have a copy of that accident report? Yes, ma'am. And then I had a passenger with me who made a statement, and I had that notarized, too. May I have that as well? Let me hear from you, uh, Ms. Gall. What happened? Okay, come so on over here and show me. So he was right when he said that these two cars were like this, but there was a car behind me. And I went to turn down this alley. And when I turned down the alley, he's speeding going down this street and he hit this car and this car like re was turning with me and it like rear-ended the back of me too. And he smacked Okay, when this. does the car rear-end you? He's turning with me and he rear-ended me like as he's hitting me. So it was like So it was at a three-car collision? Yeah, but this car backed up and took off like he had something to hide, like he was hiding. Why would he back up and take off? I have no idea. <laughs> so you're making a left-hand turn into the alley, why? Because I was on the way to uh, drop my friend off at home and we were going to park the car there. You pointed to him. Does this guy have anything to do with the case? No, I have Okay. He was in the car with me. He was in the back seat with our kids. Oh, he was in the car? Yeah, okay. he was in the back seat with our kids. Was he in the car? I believe so. Okay. He told All me. All right. So I'd like to see, you could go ahead and go back. And I would like to see damages to, to both of the car, pictures of damages to both of the cars. I have photographs right here. Whose car is this one? That's my car. What kind of car is this? It's a 2002 Saturn SL2. Can you prove that? Because the repair order says 2001, so there's some confusion about what year it is. Um, Whose car is this? Yours? That one's mine. Maybe it is a 2001. I have the damaged pictures here, too. Yeah, let me see damaged pictures to the back of your car that you were talking about, because I don't see them. 
In fact, this is a picture of the back of your car, and I don't see any damage. Yeah. I see lack of damage. So that's where he hits you, because according to him, you come right in front of him. So where's the damage to the back of your car from the other car? He did the part down there where it looks like the bumper's hanging off the bottom of the no, car. No, that's all the one damage no, from his this, car. No, this picture, ma'am. The bottom of the car right there, where it looks like the bumper's hanging okay, off the bottom. Okay, that's a picture taken by you, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so I mean, I'd like to see the pictures you took of the damage to the back of your car to explain away why you end up on oncoming traffic. You have... Okay, yeah, none of those include the back of the car. Where here am I supposed to see the damage... Just a second, let me ask my question. Where here am I supposed to see the damage from this guy hitting you in the back. If you look at the pictures I showed you, you can see my light where it was cracked. Thank you. So how is it that I'm supposed to look at that and see that a car hit you? How is it that just the light got damage and not any of the car if a car actually hit you? And that becomes important because you're giving that as a reason why you're not responsible to the damages to his car. You're saying, well, you have multiple defenses, but let's talk about that one first. You say, I was propelled into his path by a car that hit me. You've changed that a little now from no. your notes, and now you're saying, I am making a left and the car ended up hitting me. I, I don't even see evidence that the car ended up hitting you on any of these pictures. And why are you making a left onto oncoming traffic? Because no. he's got the right of way if you're just making a left. He was three streets back going 60 in a 35 zone. I'm sorry. He's got the right of way. He's on, he's driving. He's just driving. He wasn't he's even. just driving in his lane. And then you end up making a left. And as it turns out, you misjudged because the person making the left doesn't have the right of way. The person who's driving has a right of way, That's who's the going thing. straight. He wasn't. So if you're making a left, which is, this is now a third version of your defense. If you're making a left, then why don't you wait until it's safe to make? Because if you see him coming, and you see that he's going 60 miles an hour in a 30 mile zone, because that's what you're testifying to under oath. So if you're seeing all that, why do you make the left? Why don't you wait? He wasn't close enough to me when I made the so turn. So did you see him or didn't you see him? I mean, I seen him, but he wasn't close enough to me when I was making the turn. So you misjudged because the evidence is in the crash that in fact, he was right there. I guess. Yeah, so you misjudge whether you had the right to make a left. Now, that's not at all what she told you at the scene. No. What does she tell you at the scene, according to you? At the scene, she says, why didn't that person stop? They brake checked me. Brake checking, meaning she was she traveling was... behind somebody who yes. thought she was traveling too fast. And so they went and they tapped yep. on the brakes yes, and she swerved and lost control. Yes. And she ends up not. She ends up on someone's driveway, right? Like you end up someone's on lawn. someone's property or lawn. I landed in. I. Ended up in somebody's yard, yes. Yeah. Um, can I? So, yeah, just a second. So you call the police and they say, no, not a priority. She gives you insurance information. Do you call the insurance company? She did not give me any insurance information other than she, she said that she had progressive. She couldn't provide any kind of policy number or anything else. Okay, did you call Agent. the police back and say, hey, she's driving without insurance? I did. And, and what they them, say? Uh, they said, you have to come down and file a report. Okay. Do you have insurance? Yes, but I didn't May have- May I see your insurance? I didn't have a car, I don't have a okay, car. Okay, that's great. Well, no, well, now you're being sued, okay? Yes. So I imagine that if you have insurance, you're gonna be able to prove it to me today, right? That you're not driving without insurance on a permit. I don't have it with me. You don't have it at all. Do I do. Welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. Is it possible when metal hits metal, when somebody rear ends somebody, that you wouldn't, he you wouldn't see any damage to that metal? Uh, yes, I believe it would be. No damage? Yep. I don't think there would be any. Damage. Really? You think that's possible with any force? Yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely agree. I think you just like brush it off a little bit. Paint's fine, paint's fine. We're good. So you wouldn't <laughs> see any evidence of any um, any damage at all? I think there would be damage. It depends on the force of the of the hit. I mean, going inside the courtroom. No insurance company no, ever contacted you? Absolutely not. Okay. They Do you have any proof of what you're saying? Anything at all? A letter from your insurance company? emails back and forth with the adjuster, anything to prove that you have insurance and you made and you called them to let them know what happened. I don't. Okay. Now, according to you, not only was he speeding, and you can assess for me and testify for me the rate at which he was traveling, you say, well, I saw him and he was going 60 miles an hour. Ah, I took the turn anyway. All right. But also, according to you, he was driving drunk. Yes. Talk to me about that. 
Okay, so when he got out of his car and I was asking him for his insurance information, he refused to give me his name, phone number, anything. The only reason I even knew his name was when I got the information about being sued. Once I found out his name, or let me stop that part first. Well, as he was talking to me, he was slurring his words. Even the person that was with him test of, like told me that they thought he was slurring his words and told me that he had a bottle inside of his vehicle of alcohol. Well, as he was pulling off, he witnessed him throw the bottle out of the car, which I have with me today. You have a bottle for me today? Yes. Yeah, may I see the bottle? Okay, and what's that a bottle of? Hennessy. Hennessy, and that's the bottle he threw out of the car that magically didn't shatter. It was into the grass. <laughs> he threw it into the grass when he parked on the side of the road like he told okay. you he and had parked. you part. saw him throw it into the grass? He saw him throw it into the grass. Who yes. saw him throw it? Oh, let's hear from you, cowboy. What happened? <laughs> When he was pulling out, he just threw the bottle out the window. Why would he do that? To give you a piece of evidence? Well, it's empty. <laughs> I don't know. You know you're under oath, right? I know. OK. You started to say something, and then he said, well, let me stop. First, let me tell you about how he's slurring his speech. I take it that you ran a records check, and according to you, you found some DUIs in his background? No, I found prior traffic tickets where he's um, well, that's not what you said in your answer to the complaint. You said DUIs. Are you backtracking on that? I don't remember saying anything about DUIs. What okay. I remember saying is that he do had. Do you have any DUIs in control. your background? I do. How many? I also have eight years of sobriety. Right. Um, I have two DUIs in my background. Okay. One in '94. Which is exactly what you said. You don't remember saying that? No, I don't remember. Okay, saying that's that magical because I know he didn't contribute it. Go on. I have all the like prior traffic things and where he's been failure to control. Um, just a bunch of traffic. So let me ask you a question. Do you call the cops when you see a car you collided with that you believe is responsible for the accident because he's driving like a maniac? And uh, I did call and they told me the same thing. They were on priority only. Do you have any proof only. that you called the police ever? Because I, I they don't They were see on that. priority only. They couldn't come no, to No, that's us. what they told him. Did she ever call the police in front of you? Not in front of me. Did you ever fact... call the police and tell them, hey, just, you just threw a bottle of Hennessy. Did you do that? Yes, I did. May I see evidence of they that? They were on priority only. They couldn't come did to us. Did you ever file then... a police report to show before today that he had, in fact, thrown a bottle of Hennessy out? I went to the hospital immediately after the accident because I had a neck injury and broken ribs. And I have a picture of when I was in the hospital with the neck brace on. That was that. Is that a yes or no to my question? I don't have any evidence. OK. Do you have a claim against your insurance company for uh, personal injury protection? I only had. Do you have a lawsuit against your insurance company for your injuries? No. Do you have a lawyer? No. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't believe you. I don't even understand why you're going through these Herculean efforts. Sometimes accidents just happen. Uh, I probably think the reason why is because you don't have insurance. Um, because there usually has to be a motive to go through all this. If you have insurance, you're just going to say, hey, accidents happen. But if it's going to come out of your pocket and you're worried about having to pay something, then you come up with this fantastical story that you're coming up with. You either turned in front of oncoming traffic, which you shouldn't have done, because according to you, you see it. It's, he didn't come out of nowhere. He didn't land with the Martians. He's coming at you at a high rate of speed, so you decide to turn left. Or probably more likely, the guy in front of you brake checked and you swerved to avoid hitting him, and then you end up in this collision. Um, I find the most offensive part of all this is that little Hennessy bottle that you brought to court. Because I've been around the block a lot, OK? A lot. Uh, now, you have um, a, a, an estimate of $3,000 in damages to a car that is not even worth $3,000. You're right. That's why I sold the car and bought another car. Now, how would she know that you sold the car? I'm assuming that she went through my Facebook, because I put a picture of my new car. And all that stuff is public? People don't. Nobody lives their life in private anymore. Um, all right. Either way, the most you're a capped at the value of the car, which is less than one of those estimates anyway. The, the value, well, I don't have anything to prove. I, I do. Okay. I have the Kelly Blue Book value of okay, your great. car. And it's uh, $1,410. I'm finding in your favor in the amount of $1,410. Thank you. So the plaintiff prevails, but not exactly what he was seeking here. Ms. Gall didn't go too well for you, did it? No. Do you think it was a smart idea to bring the bottle of Hennessy in with you? I mean, he threw it out the car, so I was just bringing the evidence. It is really the one he threw out? Yeah. All right, I'm sorry you can't prevail on this.
Okay. It's all right. Good luck to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Mr. Sparks is on his way out of the court. You know, I heard you say you've been sober for, what, eight years yes, now? Yes, sir. Well, September will be eight years. Did it offend you when she charged you, brought that bottle in? It didn't surprise me, but it was a little offensive. I can, I can appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, well, you can't get 3000 No. But, but you got something out of it. Well, absolutely. It's the law of averages. You ask for more than you expect. Okay. So, <laughs> Good luck to you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, sir. Harvey? Doug, it's ridiculous to say that he threw Hennessy out of the car. By the way, you should know that when you lie in court and make up evidence, that's a crime and that's perjury.